Welcome to the exciting universe of music theory. Are you ready to learn? Then let's begin. Today we will talk about prime form. What is prime form? To answer this question, we will take a brief look at post-tonal music theory. What is post-tonal? This word describes a genre of music in which composers don't obey the traditional rules of classical harmony. It's also called atonal. In atonal or post-tonal music, instead of tonics and dominants and key signatures and chords built of diatonic thirds, the music is concerned with tones combining with other tones, ignoring any kind of role in a key. To understand prime form, we will examine how sets of pitches in post-tonal music may relate to each other. For an easy example, let's examine the major scale. The major diatonic scale can be described as a set of pitches. In post-tonal theory, the quality of this set is characterized by the intervals between the pitches. Counting the intervals that are a distance of one semitone, we see there are two of them, here, and here. Counting the intervals that are a distance of two semitones, we see there are five of them, here, 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 and here. Of intervals with three semitones, or a minor third, there are four, here, 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 and here. There are three major third intervals with four semitones, here, here, and here, with five semitones, also called a perfect fourth. We can find six intervals, here, 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 and here. And finally with six semitones, also called a tritone, there is just one. Here, there is no need to measure larger intervals, since they are all merely an inverted form of an interval we have already counted. These six measurements of the intervals is called the interval vector. It is normally written as a sequence of six integers, like this. 2, 5, 4, 3, 6, 1. Any set of pitches will have an interval vector. For example, Neapolitan minor has an interval vector of 3,4,3,5,4,2. Diminished scale has an interval vector of 4,4,8,4,4,4. When you rotate the pattern, the interval vector does not change. Likewise if you take a mirror reflection of the pattern, the interval vector is always the same. The point of this is that you can transform a scale by rotation and reflection, and the interval vector remains the same. These transformed scales will have different notes. In classical harmony they have different harmonic qualities, and are used in different ways. But in post-tonal theory where tonicity is discarded, they are tonally equivalent. Let's look at an example. Here is the major scale again. If we rotate it like this, we get its second mode, Dorian, which sounds like this. The shorthand for this transformation is T for transposition and the number 2 because we moved all the pitches by two semitones. If we reflect it like this, we get its inverse, Phrygian, which sounds like this. The shorthand for this transformation is T, the number 0 because we did not rotate it, and the letter I, for inverse. If we rotate it by a perfect fourth, then invert the pattern, we get the Locrian scale which is transformation T6I. Since there are 12 different intervals we can rotate the scale by, and they can all be inverted, there are a total of 24 different possible transformations. This set of 24 pitch class sets is called a transpositional inversional set class. All the sets belonging to the same class are fairly similar sounding. In his 1973 book The Structure of Atonal Music, Alan Forte identified all the possible set classes and gave them all a code. A forte class number refers to a pattern of tones in all its transformations. It is useful to group them all together because they all have so much in common. They have the same interval vector, the same number of symmetries, the same distribution spectra, cardinality, cohematonia, and all sorts of other properties of interest to music theorists. That group of 24 pitch sets, though they all have unique pitches, are all functionally identical in post-tonal theory. Once we have calculated atonal properties of one of them, we don't need to do any of the others. So we have established that for this transpositional inversional set class, it is useful to pick one that will be an exemplary representative. We call this exemplary set the prime form. Since they are all equivalent it really doesn't matter which one, but it is nice to have a consistent rule for picking which one will be prime. 
So, how do we pick the prime set? Alan Forte suggested an algorithm for choosing the prime form. In his book he describes a method of representing the tones with numbers, then choosing a set where those numbers start with zero, and are in the most compact configuration. Forte's algorithm is sensible if you are figuring it all out by hand, but if you have access to the internet, there is an easier way. Go to ianring.com, slash music theory, slash scales, slash, and then the number of your scale. Scroll down to read all the detailed information, and there you can see whether a scale is prime or not. If you found this video informative, please consider supporting this channel by becoming a patron. Of course not everyone has the means to support a project like this one financially, and that's okay. But if you are able to spare just one dollar a month, your help is deeply appreciated. It will not only allow others to continue enjoying this series for free, but will also go toward improving the quality and quantity of music theory resources we can provide. Go to patreon.com slash music theory, and join others like yourselves who totally geek out on all this nerdy stuff. Thank you to these Patreon patrons.